Item number SCP-5118, Security Level 3, Containment Class, Euclid, Disruption Class, VAM, Risk Class, Notice. Special Containment Procedures, SCP-5118 is kept in a K-9 containment chamber on Site-64, furnished with a pet bed and a chew toy. Note, to be rotated bi-weekly with a new one. SCP-5118 is given a constant supply of fresh water and three meals per day consisting of dry kibble. Interaction with SCP-5118 is strictly limited to testing purposes. Description SCP-5118 is a Class I reality bender. SCP-5118 has demonstrated the ability to manifest and demanifest objects at will, as well as alter its own physiology. SCP-5118 currently resembles an adult golden retriever. SCP-5118 Containment Log On August 18th, 2019, MTF Gate 1 Umpires was dispatched to Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, disguised as citizens following several reports describing suspected alterations to reality. MTF Gate 1 was equipped with remote video and audio equipment for communication with Dr. Williams back at Site 64. Extraneous conversations removed. All right, we're here. What exactly are we looking for again? Reality disturbances. From the most recent report we've intercepted, it sounds like we're dealing with a Class 1. Any visual description or location? Last known location was near Hyde Park. A young adult male humanoid. Probably still is if it hasn't gotten a hang of things yet. Alright, let's head over there. The MTF travels by foot towards Hyde Park. Several groups of civilians were seen loitering around the area. It's going to be a hard one to spot pass. Alpha points towards a bench of a few hundred yards away. A young adult male is sitting on a bench and eating a chocolate bar from the wrapper. What? I don't see anything. The male on the bench finishes his chocolate bar, crumbles the wrapper in one hand, and demanifests it. Well, crap. Confirming visual of target. Copy. Do not engage yet. Follow the protocol. Got it. Beta, go left. Gamma, take the right. Establish a visual perimeter. The MTF splits off in separate directions, surrounding SCP-5118 at a distance. During the maneuver, SCP-5118 manifests an object, assembling a small vine of grapes, and bites into one, before cursing and demanifesting the object. No way! Do you guys see that? The plastic fruit? Yeah. That was... weird. SCP-5118 manifests a bottle of Dazzle's brand cola, but struggles to untwist the cap. The subject demanifests the cap along with the top half of the bottle, spilling the beverage on itself before taking a sip. Class 1 confirmed. Please proceed. Alpha motions to the other task force members and the three of them begin to move towards SCP-5118. The subject briefly looks up and notices Alpha walking towards it. The subject glances behind itself, notices the other two agents heading in its direction, and proceeds to flee. It notices us. Go, go, go! The three MTF members give chase. SCP-5118 quickly stops, turns around, and holds one of its hands out. A short brick wall suddenly manifests in front of the subject, though it topples over before SCP-5118 starts running again. Watch the debris! Go around it! The agents easily overcome the pile of bricks and continue chasing SCP-5118. As it flees, it points towards a large tree and pulls its arm back. The tree shakes and some loose leaves fall, but nothing else occurs. These just try to keep running! Don't lose it! The agents begin chasing the distance between themselves and SCP-5118. The subject looks back panically and swipes his arm perpendicular to the agent. 
A strong gust of wind suddenly knocks down Beta, but also SCP-5118. Now, quick! Alpha and Gamma move full sprint towards the subject as it tries to regain its footing. SCP-5118 tries crawling away from the agents and, as it does, metamorphoses into its current form. Rather than continue to flee, however, the subject instead ran towards the agents and displayed behavior identical to that of a baseline domesticated dog. Note, this included SCP-5118 licking the agents and wagging its tail. SCP-5118 was contained without any further incident and transferred to Site-64. SCP-5118 Reclassification On September 17th, Several attempts were made to coax SCP-5118 back into humanoid form so that communication may be established with it. Method of coaxing. Procedure. Results. Verbal prompting. Dr. Williams spoke to SCP-5118 through the loudspeaker of its chamber and asked it to change back into a human so we can talk. Upon hearing Dr. Williams on the loudspeaker, the subject felt its ears and tail upwards. SCP-5118 began sniffing the floor of the chamber in an attempt to find the source of the voice. Audio simulation. A single tone of 37,000 hertz was played through the loudspeaker. SCP-5118 began howling loudly. The tone was turned off after approximately a minute and SCP-5118 exhibited no further changes in behavior. Physical Stimulation A 500 volt shock collar was placed on the subject and activated at the discretion of Dr. Williams. SCP-5118 was shocked once. The subject vocalized a yelp and ran to the opposite side of the room with its tail between its legs. Foundation Intervention a Scranton reality anchor was set up beneath SCP-5118's chamber. Upon activation, SCP-5118 did not react whatsoever. Following the above tests, several brain imaging scans were performed on SCP-5118, including a CT and MRI. The results displayed no abnormalities from the brain of a regular baseline golden retriever. It is currently believed that during its encounter with MTF Gate 1, SCP-5118 altered its own psychology to that of a baseline dog due to its inexperience with its anomalous abilities. As a result, SCP-5118 is pending reclassification to neutralize. Form 5118E Proposal for Reclassification Item Number SCP-5118 Object Class Euclid Proposed object class, neutralized. Reason for proposal. The subject turned into a baseline domesticated dog during containment effort and no longer displays any anomalous properties whatsoever. Dr. Williams, Site-64 Director. September 17th, 2019. On September 25th, 2019, a meeting was held on Site-64 to discuss Dr. Williams' proposal and determine an appropriate course of action. The meeting was recorded via visual and audio devices for posterity. Attendees Dr. Williams, Site 64 Director, Dr. Atmos, Regional Director, Dr. LaCrue, Regional Containment Specialist. Meeting Log Part A The group enters the room and sits at a round table. Dr. Atmos and Dr. LaCrue shovel through several papers. While Dr. Williams places a briefcase on the floor beside his chair. Let's see here. Ah, here we go. All good? Yes, yes. Let's begin. Dr. Williams, we're gathering today to discuss your proposal. All right. As you probably suspected, we've already reviewed the request prior to this meeting. It's very uncommon for an anomaly a reality bender nonetheless, to be reclassified as neutralized. I am well aware of that and stand by my proposal. There are many ongoing projects that could use the resources we currently have allocated to SCP-5118. Dr. LaCrue, 
who straightens his stack of papers on the table. Dr. LeCou? Dr. Williams, to what degree are you confident that a subject currently in containment is the same subject encountered by the task force? Are you suggesting it swap places with a dog? No, I'm asking how confident you are that it didn't. I'm certain, without a doubt. Dr. Williams lifts his briefcase onto the table and taps its side. May I? Please do. Dr. Williams opens the briefcase and removes an SD card. He walks to the other side of the room towards a small SD card reader connected to a projection screen and inserts it. If I may direct your attention to the following moments of the footage. Dr. Williams fast forwards through the video for a while before pausing it. What exactly are we looking at here? One of the frames from Alpha's camera. The others show it too, but this angle is the clearest. Show what? Take a look at the corner of the frame. Do you see it? A dog's foot. Human's leg. I see. So the actual metamorphosis was caught on camera. I suppose that recently rules out the possibility of a different subject. Dr. Williams, can you please rewind footage to a moment before the metamorphosis? Uh-huh, sure. Dr. Williams proceeds to rewind the video again. Right here, stop. Dr. Williams quickly hits the pause button. This is the subject in frame. Yes, that's correct. Is it smiling? Hmm, it does kind of look like it. Almost like a smirk. It's probably distortion from the camera movement. It could even just be that it was breathing through its mouth during the pursuit, and it happened to look like a smile on the video. Yes, that is a possibility. Can you skip through the surrounding frames a bit? Dr. Williams skips through the previous and upcoming seconds of the video frame by frame. The subject's face is only visible on the first frame. On this tape, yes, there were two other members on the team who also had cameras. I see. We're going to take a short recess then, during which Dr. Williams will retrieve the footage of Beta and Gamma. Uh, okay, sure. Dr. William leaves the room. So, I'm not sure. Same here. Everything so far points to... I know. Meeting Log, Part B Dr. William returns to the room holding another briefcase. Any issues? Nope, I got them right here. Perfect. Please play Beta's camera footage. Dr. Williams removes the previous SD card from the machine and inserts another one from the second briefcase before skipping through the video. Right there, I think there's the same moment. Yeah, it's still hard to tell though. I really don't think it's a smile. What about Gamma's angle? Right here. Dr. Williams opts the SD card for another one. He fast forwards the video to the same point. You can't really see the subject's face in this one. Unfortunately not, too bad. Are there any photos of the subject on file? Just the post contained one we took for his document. Hmm, any missing person reports for the area? None at all. That's hard to say the least. Previous containment of humanoids have almost always been followed up on by addressing a missing person's report. Indeed, without a doubt it lived alone. If there's no missing persons report, it might not be in contact with its family. Bet it makes post containment follow up a bit easier, huh? If only it worked that way, Dr. Williams. Can you please rewind the video to the first moment the task force made visual contact with the subject? No problem. Dr. Williams rewinds the footage as requested. There? Yes, that's fine. Please play it. Dr. Williams plays the video. SCP-5118 is sitting on a bench as described in its article. Dr. Williams, do you notice anything significant about the following scene? Yeah, definitely. It's sitting out in the open. Normally, a reality bender would try to hide its abilities upon discovering them, but this one just wandered into a busy public park and couldn't care less who saw it. I see. 
and what was the name of this park? Hyde Park. Some off-leash dog park in the middle of the city. Dr. Atmos and Dr. LeCrue did not respond, scribbling intently on their notepads. Is everything all right? Everything is fine, Dr. Williams. I think we're going to take another recess now. Already? But it's only been, well, we assume in ten minutes. Please leave the room. Uh, all right. Dr. Williams leaves the room. It definitely looked like a smile, but we can't rule out the possibility that it wasn't. True, but we can use other evidence from the video to support that. What do you mean, look at the video? I mean, yeah, it makes sense that it'd be in a dog part of all places. That's actually not what I was referring to. What is it then? Meeting log, part C. Dr. Williams re enters the room. Ah, Dr. Williams, shall we continue? That's what I've been wanting to do. Great, please have a seat then. I wanted to ask you a few more things. Dr. Williams sits back down on his seat. Now, the snacks that SCP-5118 was seen eating. Mm hmm. Did anything significant stand out about the subject's choice of snacks? What? No. Sorry to interrupt, Dr. Atmos. At that topic, I want to ask you if SCP-5118 has ever requested these snacks while in containment. It's a dog. It can't talk. Very well. Let's continue through the video. Dr. Williams stands on his chair to hit the play button. The video shows SCP-5118 eating snacks, breaking attention from its snacks only temporarily when a dog walking by with its own box at it. Interesting. But, without a doubt, it's just eating junk food. Dr. Williams, I'd like to move into the topic of the subject's current containment. Of course, standard canine containment has per policy. Yes, yes, I can see that from the document. I'm more curious as to the subject's mood surrounding the current containment procedures. Hmm, happy, I guess? It gets three meals a day and new toys, so why wouldn't it be? And does the subject interact with its assigned staff? Yeah, whenever they go into the chamber to give it food or replace the toy, it jumps up on them all playfully. Some of the staff even started calling it Goldie since it's a golden retriever. Creative, I know. I'm still writing up the disciplinary reports for those staff, but it seems to like the name, saying it gets its attention. I see. Dr. Williams, I think we can conclude this meeting. Dr. Lepu and I have to discuss a few things before moving forward with a decision. All right, now what? Please return to your office. We'll pay you to return once we made a decision. Will do. Thanks. Dr. Williams leaves the room. That was short. Yeah, but I already made my decision during the last recess. You did. What did you see? Dr. Williams came back in before I could show you. Here, screenshot this frame of the video and send it to my drive. I'll be right back. Dr. Atmos leaves the room while Dr. LePru does as requested. Around five minutes later, Dr. Atmos returns to the room holding a piece of paper. What's that? Take a look. I have to zoom in and crop it, but it's pretty legible if you ask me. No way. So you've come to the decision as well then, without a doubt. Now you're sounding like Dr. Williams. I'll preach him back in. Meeting log, final decision. Dr. Williams into the room again. Hello, Dr. Williams. We've come to a decision to your proposal. Fantastic, and your proposal for reclassification has been denied. What? That's preposterous. What's the reason? Dr. Atmos refused the piece of paper he had shown Dr. Lecou. Missing dog. $250 reward. Last spotted on September 16th near Hyde Park. Very friendly and playful. Loves to play chase. Response to Goldie. If found, please call 306-555-4417. Please help us find our baby.